As we roll into midterm election season, the Democratic Party is looking surprisingly strong. Now, hear me out. Even though President Biden's approval numbers are underwater, polls asking who voters will choose in their local congressional races, the Democratic or the Republican candidate, show Democrats basically even with Republicans, or in some cases, even ahead. Joining me now, Rachel Bittekoffer, political strategist and host of The Cycle on Substack, and John Della Volpe, director of polling at the Harvard Kennedy School, in, Harvard Kennedy School Institute of Politics and author of Fight, How Gen Z is Channeling Their Fear and Passion to Save America. Rachel, John, thank you both very much uh, for coming to The Sunday Show. Um, I'm, this question is both for both of you, but Rachel, you, I want you to go first. How do you explain this discrepancy? Biden underwater, but his fellow Democrats holding their own on the generic ballot? Yeah, I mean, a couple of things I would say. Number one, what we're seeing in that generic ballot and the enthusiasm gap, which is how excited Republicans are relative to Democrats, is some evidence that recent political turbulence, um, primarily the road of this iteration of Roe and, and the threat to right to privacy, but also the, I mean, absolutely stunning conclusion of the plot, right? Um, you know, bringing, bringing to life the idea that the armed insurrection, it was an armed insurrection that was intentional and plotted by Donald Trump. So what we're seeing is movement there, John, and, and it is reason to get excited, right? Because we haven't seen movement in months in those numbers, mm -hmm. but I do want to temper people's enthusiasm Enthusiasm and say it's it's a trend in the right direction. It's certainly not telling us that as of today everything is going to be, you know, um, cupcakes and rainbows for Democrats. <laughs> but it's telling us they have a chance to compete, and it's also telling us that the Republicans have kind of squandered some of this structural fundamental mm -hmm. advantage, both by their radicalism and also by this road decision. John, um, your thoughts on how do you explain the the discrepancy? Well, I think, Jonathan, over the last couple of cycles, if we haven't learned, we, we've learned nothing other than conventional wisdom just isn't what it used to be, you know? And, and, and as you said from, from the break, that you would expect Republicans to have a significant advantage given President Biden's approval ratings, yeah. given the rate of inflation, gas prices, et cetera. That's not happening. As you mentioned, you know, the generic ballot is one or two points. Um, it had been basically frozen there over the course of the last several months as the inflation numbers have ticked up and the and, 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 and not a positive direction for the current administration. What we're seeing, I think, is a combination of January 6th and Supreme Court really begin to focus the mind of key constituencies in this electorate, and we can see them you know, evolving their views just over the last several weeks. We see an 11-point shift in the CNN polling that was released a few weeks ago among independents. We see an 11-point shift among women, and we see a significant shift beyond 11 points among among folks who are 65 years and older. In addition to that, you know, we're, we're as you know, we've been measuring the enthusiasm of young people for 20 years now, and we're seeing numbers that look like 2018, if not exceeding that, and that was a high water mark in the last 50 years in youth participation. And all of that, I think, is again, you can't, you know, um, you know, the, the Democrats need to put work in. But I think the environment is far different than you would expect in a traditional cycle. Well, let's talk more about this environment, because history shows that in, in recent memory, only one time has the president's party not lost seats uh, in, the, in the midterm election of the first term. And that was 2002. That was President George W. Bush. So the headwinds Democrats were facing leave aside inflation and everything were already strong. But you've got inflation. But what I'm wondering, Rachel, is, is the overturning of Roe, the threat from Justice Thomas to um, contraception and marriage, marriage equality, uh, on top of a, a whole bunch of other things, is that enough to blunt the impact of people's fear of inflation in terms of helping Democrats at the ballot box in November? Uh, John, you, you know, the reporting that I've done on this has really focused on, okay, there's these midterm fundamentals, and we know they're going to be against the left, and we know that this time democracy, the survival of democracy depends on their electoral, uh, electoral survival. So, um, you know, when we think about these fundamentals that drive the midterm effect, it's a preference for change and it's a bias against the status quo. It's a lack of enthusiasm on the party on power. And we've talked a little bit about how we're seeing those things reset. But I had written 
what you need to do is, is, is set in 2002 the exception that you cite. The exception occurred because the national narrative was disrupted from domestic infighting and normal mm -hmm. politics to national crisis. So Democrats really want to make sure that they're hammering the um, abnormality of the moment. The last thing they wanted yeah. to do is, is electioneer this along the lines of inflation and normal politics. They have to make it very clear to the American electorate that we're facing a existential and crisis. And here's the nice thing I'll tell you, is that usually, like, there is some component of, like, miss me yet. So it's a joke that, you know, the out party will put up with a, their ex-president, miss me yet. But here's the thing. No one misses Trump, except for the <laughs> Trumpers. No one. There's no miss me yet effect. And so I think as long as we remind the electorate what change means, and it means more of the same chaos that we've been living with for five years, then we can help disqualify it.